So today I'm going to talk about this 1959 Series 2 that we just completed a full restoration on. So this is what we call a patina project. And it's restored to the exact same specs as our full NAO restorations, except we kept the original paint wherever we could. This original faded paint, like you see here, we call patina. So patina is something that only comes with age. It's a finish that kind of tells the story and the age of the vehicle. So first of all, why would anyone want to keep patina? Uh, it wouldn't have been that much more difficult for us to just restore the body and make it look brand new. Why would we want to leave this? Well, not every vehicle needs to look brand new when it's restored. It's perfectly acceptable to restore the vehicle, but keep this original paint that tells the story of the vehicle. It's only original once. And if we were to sand this down to bare metal and do all the body work on it and paint it, some of that story would be lost. So in the art and antiques world, patina is a very important thing. If you had a original sculpture or piece of furniture and you sanded off that finish and refinished it, it would actually lose quite a bit of its value. So sometimes it's better to leave what's original. This vehicle is 60 something years old and it's kept this paint all those years. So sometimes it's better to keep something original than to make it look like new. And of course, every dent and ding on this body tells the vehicle's story. We don't know much about the history of the vehicle. It may have gone out on adventures out into the, the hills and mountains of New Hampshire, and uh, those stories are lost except for what the battered and bruised body panels can tell us today. The other reason for maintaining the original patina on a restored vehicle is sometimes you don't want a vehicle that looks too flashy and new and fresh. Let's say you have a second home uh, out on Nantucket uh, or maybe up in the hills of Vermont and you go into town to the general store to pick up some groceries. Maybe you don't want to have the most flashy restored vehicle. You might want something that fits in a little bit better with its surroundings. And a vehicle like this would be absolutely perfect. It's still a full restoration and has all of the benefits of that, but the body is just a little bit less showy. And of course our full restorations would look great in those uh, scenarios as well, but maybe you just want something that's a little bit more discreet. And in that case, a patina project like this would be perfect. So I mentioned before that this vehicle is fully restored and that means it's fully restored to our latest version four specs. And let me first just share a little bit about my design philosophy when I'm doing these restorations. So first of all, we want to improve the vehicle to the best of our ability, but maintain its original look. So any shortcomings that the vehicle had originally, we want to upgrade that, but we don't want to change the vehicle aesthetically. So a few examples of this include safety, reliability, uh, rust proofing, and comfort. And to achieve these goals, we're not reinventing the wheel or completely modernizing the vehicle with ridiculous V8 drivetrains or things that change the vehicle's character that too much. We're simply using Series 3 parts and early Defender parts uh, that Land Rover already engineered to work well on a vehicle like this, and we're just applying it to the Series 2A. It is a little bit easier said than done because a lot of those parts do involve quite a bit of work to make everything work properly together. But when it all does come together, these vehicles are amazing. And I actually like to say that the end result is almost like a three-quarter scale Defender because you have the engine rebuilt to the latest specs. Uh, keep in mind these, these engines were available in the Defender up till 1992, so we're actually using some of the, the parts and upgrades uh, done to the engine during that time. Uh, the differentials were a known weak point in these vehicles, so we're actually using a Defender 24 spline diff in the back, uh, re-geared to either 412 to 1 or 375 to 1 gears with heavy duty 24 spline half shafts because the, the axles were a, a known weak point in these vehicles. We're also using Series 3 fully synchronized transmissions, so you don't need to double clutch first and second gear. You could just shift the transmission like a normal manual transmission. We're also using softer riding springs, parabolic springs. We're installing Defender shoulder harness seat belts, and we're also using Defender four-wheel disc brakes. So as you can imagine, these stop really well. Uh, the original brakes on these Land Rovers were marginal at best, 
we jump all the way from marginal to the latest spec brakes that were fitted to the 2016 Defender. Another benefit is that since we've done so many of these NAO series restorations, you're also benefiting from our knowledge base. So while I'm test driving this vehicle, I'm making sure that everything sounds right, is, is working properly. Uh, one example of this is the transfer case output shaft bearings. As they kind of break in, they actually need to be reshimmed. There's a bunch of big shims on the back of the transfer case, and that needs to be reshimmed so that on overrun, those bearings don't have kind of like a growling noise. And we want to make sure that these drivetrains are as tight and, and quiet as possible. So stuff like that is a huge benefit of having built so many of the same vehicles since 2010. So I mentioned that these are like three quarter scale defenders. They're about six inches narrower, uh, about five inch shorter wheelbase and quite a bit lighter. These are about 2,900 pounds as a soft top, but you benefit from a lot of these early Defender and Series 3 parts. So the end result is a vehicle that's actually really fun to drive. So I mentioned that there's a tremendous amount of attention to detail in the drivetrain and running gear of the vehicle, but there's also a lot of attention paid to the body. Even though it's original paint, this body still went through our mock-up process where we adjusted all the door gaps and we got everything to fit as good as it possibly could on the galvanized frame. And the result of that is doors that close like this. That sound is what you wanna hear when you close the door to a Land Rover. It sounds solid and it closes nice and square and you can see the door gaps are really as good as they can be on a series Land Rover. You don't get that unless you do a full mock-up on this body before it gets assembled. So even though it has original panels, it still has the fit and finish of our full restorations. So I mentioned the excellent fit and finish of the original body panels. Another thing I need to mention is that any part on this vehicle that was rusted has been replaced. So you won't find any rust on the door tops here because these are extruded aluminum door tops that are brand new. Same thing with the bulkhead. It's galvanized steel and will last for another 60 years. So another part that's been replaced is the door frames. So you can see these are new door frames here and they've been mounted to the original skins. I love that door sound. So we talked about the drivetrain and we talked about the body. Now let's talk about some of the options. So this vehicle has what we call our NAO Expedition Package. This is a package of parts that improves the off-road capabilities of the vehicle. And that starts with the differentials. This has an Ashcroft ATB rear limited slip differential and it has a Detroit True Track front limited slip differential. Uh, on top of that, all our vehicles have heavy duty ring and pinion gears. And this is really important because the differentials were a known weak point on original series vehicles. So it has heavy duty ring and pinions with a reverse rotation front ring and pinion. And of course the 24 spline half shafts are a necessity on any series Land Rover. It also has a worn M8000 winch and a heavier duty winch bumper up front. It has rock sliders. And it also has an Odyssey AGM battery, so a little bit heavier duty vibration resistant battery to keep that winch running. And then there's also a few other smaller details, like it has a front differential skid plate. That's the lowest hanging point on the drivetrain on these, so that's protected. So another upgrade that all of our NAO restored vehicles get is a little bit higher ratio ring and pinion gear. So these had 470 to 1 gear ratios originally, which means that they basically, the vehicles were tacking out at about 50 miles an hour. So with our standard builds, we'll install a 412 to one gear ratio, which will allow you to drive on the highway. It raises the cruising speed to about 55 miles an hour and the top speed roughly around 70. Uh, on this one, we opted to go with a 375 to one gear ratio, 
which allows for 60 mile an hour cruising speed. Now, of course, the trade-off is you lose a little bit of the lower gearing, but it's great to be able to take a vehicle like this out on the highway to get to where you need to go. So I talked a little bit about the drivetrain, about the body, and about the options that the vehicle has. Now let me talk about some of the things that make this particular vehicle unique. So first of all, this is a very early Series 2. This is a 1959, so you have a lot of small details on the 59 that set it apart from the early 2As. So you have these separate vent flap pintles here, you have separate horn, and you have your turn signals down on the dash here. So that's unique. It has a little bit deeper reveal on this capping. It has a seat box with an aluminum toolbox instead of steel. It has this inspection cover on the, tr on the transmission tunnel. It has these vent flap openers that you turn instead of lift. It has a few features on the, uh, the body, like it has these earlier tail lights. It has three bolts on the tailgate hinges and the tailgate hinges are a little bit thicker and heavier duty. The, the door hinges are actually unique to a Series 2 as well. There's just a slightly different profile than the early 2A uh, type door hinges. So the other thing that you'll notice is that the color is actually a very rare sand color and you don't see too many Land Rovers in this color. Most of them were blue or pastel green. So to see a Land Rover in this original export sand is actually pretty neat. And to me, this is one of my favorite colors. It's actually very close to my NAO Expedition Package matte tan color. And the reason I love this color is because when you see old time Expedition vehicles like Citroen half tracks and stuff like that, they're always in this kind of desert tan color. And it just evokes images of the vehicle driving across the Sahara or out in the Gobi Desert. And it just really, I feel it's a very evocative color and it speaks to the off-road and expedition type use that these vehicles were designed to have originally. So we talked quite a bit about this vehicle, but there's one more thing to discuss. And that's why would someone want to go with an NAO restored vehicle? So first of all, all of our vehicles are built to the exact same standards. So that means that every engine, every transmission, every differential is built the same. So each of our vehicles is serialized. And the benefit of that is that at any point in time, you could give us a call with this serial number and we can provide any part numbers or technical support for maintaining or servicing the vehicle. The other benefit is that when you purchase the vehicle, we provide an NAO specific owner's manual to, tr to help make driving and maintaining and living with this vehicle easier. Uh, we've had a lot of customers who have never owned a classic car. Um, in some cases, we've had people that have never even driven a stick shift car become Land Rover owners by using this, this manual to teach them about the vehicle and how to operate it properly. And of course, if you pick up the vehicle in person, we'll go over every aspect of this manual with you so that you can learn how to properly drive and operate the vehicle. And of course, all our NAO restored vehicles have a one year warranty on parts and labor. So if this vehicle was having any issues, you could bring it back to us and we would correct those issues. And I don't know where else you would find that level of service on a 1950s vehicle. And this is why a lot of our customers have gone with us after owning a Series 2A and having a horrible ownership experience and just a, a nightmare of repairs and problems, uh, they've come to us for an NAO restored Land Rover and have been more than happy. As you can see on our website, on the testimonials page, you could read a little bit about what our customers have to say about uh, NAO and our level of detail and service on these vehicles. So we've covered quite a bit about the 1959 Series 2 with the NAO Patina Restoration. So as you can tell, these vehicles are designed for long-term ownership and they're designed to be driven. My goal is to create a vehicle that becomes the customer's go-to vehicle. So if they're out at their beach house on Nantucket and they have this vehicle or their brand new Mercedes SUV, I want this to be the vehicle that they jump in to go into town to get groceries or do a pizza run or to just jump in the vehicle and see where those back roads take you and just see what's around the next bend and just drive the vehicle for the sake of driving it. I want this to be the vehicle that they actually feel an emotional attachment to, that they actually feel something when they drive it rather than their modern car that feels more appliance-like. 
So this vehicle is 100% ready to go. I've done the 300 test drive miles on it. We've changed out the brake and oil and it's fully ready for its next owner to take it out and drive and enjoy it. So if you're interested in purchasing this vehicle or coming out to take it for a test drive to see how you like it, you can send us an email at northamericaoverland at gmail.com or give us a call at 203-880-5072 and we'll start up a conversation about this 1959 Series 2 Patina Project.